Hello and welcome to the 2023 edition of the first um, book talk that we're doing this year. Um, hello and my name is Abby and I am the Talking Book Librarian. Thank you for joining us for our book talk series. These videos will be recorded and out on the Indiana State Library's YouTube channel, as well as a Talking Book Facebook page. The purpose of these book talks is to provide book ideas for book clubs and to include questions for you to answer for yourself or in a book club setting. These videos will remain online in perpetuity, so you can decide to read these books whenever you decide to. If you are interested in these books or any of the others, give the Talking Book employees a call at 800-622-4970. Feel free to pause this video at any time to answer any of the questions. The book we will be discussing today is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. And a little overview of the book. At, age, at the age of 36, on the verge of completing a decade's worth of training as a neurosurgeon, Paul Kalanithi was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. One day he was a doctor treating the dying, and the next he was a patient struggling to live. And just like that, the future he and his wife had imagined evaporated. When Breath Becomes Air chronicles Kalanithi's transformation from a naive medical student into a neurosurgeon at Stanford, and finally into a patient and a new father confronting his own mortality. What makes life worth living in the face of death? What do you do when the future, no longer a ladder towards the goals in your life, flattens out into a perpetual present? What does it mean to have a child to nurture a new life as another fades away? These are some of the questions Kalanithi wrestles with in this profoundly moving, exquisitely observed memoir. Paul Kalanithi died in March of 2015 while working on this book. Yet his words live on as a guide and a gift to us all. When Breath Becomes Air is an unforgettable, life-affirming reflection on the challenge of facing death and on the relationship between doctor and patient from a brilliant writer who became both. And then just a little bit about the author. Paul Kalanithi was a neurosurgeon and a writer. Paul grew up in Kingman, Arizona before attending Stanford University, from which he graduated in 2000 with a BA and MA in English Literature and a BA in Human Biology. He earned an MPhil in History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine from the University of Cambridge before attending medical school. In 2007, Paul graduated cum laude in the, from the Yale School of Medicine winning the Lewis H. Nahum Prize for Outstanding Research and Membership in the Alpha Omega Alpha Medical Honor Society. He returned to Stanford for residency training in neurological surgery and a postdoctoral fellowship in neuroscience during which he authored over 20 scientific publications and received the American Academy of Neurological Surgery's highest award for research. Paul's reflections on doctoring and illness, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer in 2013, though he never smoked, have been published in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Paris Review Daily. In addition to interviews in academic settings and media outlets such as MSNBC, Paul completed neurosurgery residency in 2014. Paul died in March 2015 while working on When Breath Becomes Air, an unforgettable life-affirming reflection on the challenge of facing mortality and on the relationship between doctor and patient from a gifted writer who became both. He is survived by his wife, Lucy, and their daughter, Katie. And now we will go on into the book discussion questions. Um, so book discussion question number one, how did you come away feeling after reading this book? Were you upset, inspired, anxious, less afraid? Question two, what did you think of Paul's exploration of the relationship between science 
and faith. As Paul wrote, science may provide the most useful way to organize empirical, reproducible data, but its power to do so is predicated on its inability to grasp the most central aspects of human life, hope, fear, love, hate, beauty, envy, honor, weakness, striving, suffering, virtue. Between these core passions and scientific theory, there will always be a gap. No system of thought can contain the fullness of human experience. Do you agree or disagree? Next question. How do you think the years Paul spent tending to patients and training to be a neurosurgeon affected the outlook he had on his own illness? When Paul wrote that the question he asked himself was not why me, but why not me, how did that strike you? Could you relate to it? Paul had a strong background in the humanities and he read widely throughout his life. Only after getting a master's in English literature did he decide that medicine was the right path for him. Do you think this made him a better doctor? A different kind of doctor? If so, how? How has reading influenced your own life? What did you think of Paul and Lucy's decision to have a child in the face of illness? When Lucy asked him if he worried that having a child would make his death more painful, and Paul responded, wouldn't it be great if it did? How did that strike you? Do you agree that life should not be about avoiding suffering, but about creating meaning? Were there passage passages or sentences that struck you as particularly profound or moving? Given that Paul died before the book was finished, what are some of the questions you would have wanted to ask him if he were still here today? Paul was determined to face death with integrity and through his book, demystify it for people. Do you think he succeeded? And if so, why or why not? In Lucy's epilogue, she writes that what happened to Paul was tragic, but he was not a tragedy. Did you come away feeling the same way? How did this book impact your thoughts about medical care, the patient-physician relationship, or end-of-life care? Is this a book you will continue thinking about now that you're done with it? Do you find it having an impact on the way you go about your days? Lucy also writes that, in some ways, Paul's illness brought them closer, that she fell even more deeply in love with the beautiful, focused man he became in the last year of his life. Did you find yourself seeing how that could happen? And those questions were retrieved from the Princeton Book Review um, under their book discussion questions. And then if you are interested in um, look, learning a little bit more about Paul and his life, um, if you Google Paul's name, Paul Kalanithi, um, this link um, I have above should pop up near the top. It is um, a medical um, Stanford um, education like newsletter that talks about Paul and his work at Stanford and all of that he went through. Um, it's, it's similar to the book, but it also kind of goes into a little bit deeper about what he did at Stanford and how he made an impact in the medical community, which I find, I found pretty interesting. Um, and now I would like to provide my own thoughts on the book. Um, I enjoyed, I'm happy that I chose this book, but it was so hard to read. Um, I knew that in the end, um, Paul did pass away and that he actually didn't completely finish the book and that his wife wrote the epilogue for it, which I actually enjoyed the epilogue, I think the most out of the entire book, um, the way that Lucy wrote and just the words that she uses and the emotion she was able to evoke I didn't think I was going to get too upset about it until I read her part. Um, that had a lot of emotion to it and was really sad, but also really uplifting to see it from the caregiver's point of view and to kind of see what happened after he could no longer write the book. 
Um, but yeah, very, very sad was kind of regret picking it a little bit um, just because it was so emotional and I wasn't ready for that in January. Um, I may be a little bit farther into the year, um, but it really did kind of make you grapple a little bit with death and afterwards. And, you know, maybe now I should discuss with my family what my end of life wishes are. Um, but it also really made, made it really positive. And, you know, just because you've been given a diagnosis doesn't mean that you know, you're done. You can still do things with your life and there's still things that can be done and you can make a list, bucket list as they say. Um, but yeah, the way that Paul wrote, it was really lofty at some times. I didn't always understand what exactly he was saying. I wasn't in the same position as he was, unfortunately. Um, so I, I couldn't follow all of what he was saying, um, but I got the overall um, upliftedness of it and the um, just the, the good feelings he had and that he was able to pursue um, even after his diagnosis of cancer. Um, so I did enjoy it. Um, very hard to read, very fun, um, good book, good memoir. I really enjoyed it. Um, that ends today's book discussion. Um, I will see you guys all back in March. <laughs>